When you go to the supermarket and you shop for food, how do you know that what you're buying off the shelf is safe? Probably because you're enmeshed in an entire system of rules and regulation and trust and science that allows us to shop and cook and eat without poisoning ourselves every day. Hi, my name is Justin Hall. Recently, I sat down with a freelance food scientist. She helps people take their idea for a new food product and turn it into something that's actually safe to eat. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Rachel Zepser. Oh, cool. I am a food scientist, so I help people bring their products to market from a technical standpoint. The reason why no one knows what a food scientist does is because food companies purposely try to hide it because they don't want society to realize how their food products are really made. Not because they're made in a bad way, but when you think about your cookies, you want to think about like Keebler elves and you want to think about Friendly Green Giants and Betty Crocker. That's the way Americans like to think that their food is made. They do not like to think of a stainless steel manufacturing plant churning out like and filling bottles. And they don't like to think of microbiologists and chemists in there like writing things down and analyzing it. And they translate that, that unknown part of the world as us like just throwing preservatives into the food. Everyone thinks, oh, that's all food scientists do. We just throw preservatives in food and we don't. We're, we're actually trying to make sure that it's going to be safe and that it's going to be repeatable. And when you buy your Snickers bar today, it's going to taste the same as it does next week. And it's not going to get moldy and it's not going to go bad. Really my whole career, the food sciences has always been very, very condemned and very, you know, it, we've always been criticized as, oh, you know, we're just putting high fructose corn syrup and everything and we're putting preservatives and toxins in food. A food scientist has never thought of in a positive way. For years and years, you know, we were like the scourge of, of the, the natural hippie food people. And now all those people are calling me and they need my help. And I usually have to dispel a lot of myths first and, and, and make them realize, because they always say to me, oh, we don't want someone who's gonna put all those chemicals in, in my food. And you know, we want to take a whole different approach. And I'm like, look, I'm like, we're gonna do what we have to do to make it safe. And you have to follow the FDA rules. You can't just do whatever you want. A lot of people, when they come to me, the first thing they say is, I want to make a product that's so much better than like everything else on the market because everything kind of sucks. And I always say, well, there's a reason why everything sucks and that's because it has to be made safe. And you're not really going to get any special privileges that anyone else, you know, the bacteria isn't going to ignore your product well, and start wrecking everybody else's product. Like all, the rules are all the same. There's always new technology that comes up and, and new things that happen and, and uh, you know, new methods. but. But at the end of the day, food has to be dried, it has to be cooked, preservatives have to be added, sugar and salt have to be added if you want it to be shelf stable. If you don't care about shelf stability and you're just gonna make a refrigerated product, you have a lot more options. But refrigerated stuff doesn't last that long. Refrigerated salad dressing might only have a month or two. And the supermarket is gonna tell you, you get like a tiny amount of like refrigerated space to sell your refrigerated salad dressing. And if it doesn't sell, like you're out. Whereas if you make a shelf-stable salad dressing, you might get a much bigger amount of space on the shelf. And the store might say, well, we can keep like, you know, 30 cases in the back because it's good for a year and we'll put out like 10 a day. But in the refrigerator, there is no back refrigerator. It's like you get that tiny bit of space and the rest you got to store in a warehouse somewhere. And if it expires, that's it. So nobody ever wants to go down the refrigerated path because it's, it's too expensive. Everybody wants shelf-stable. And if you want shelf-stable, you have to inhibit the bacteria. We take for granted that a can of food is gonna last you forever. And we take for granted that our, the bread that we buy is gonna last us a while and our milk isn't gonna go bad in a couple of days. Those are all the really important innovations, in my opinion, the things that were done. Now, people are trying to take normal foods and jack it up with as much as possible so people can get everything that they want out of that food. Fiber milk, um, caffeinated gummy bears, a uh, candy that makes you smart with vitamin B. People are just trying to make food even worth more per, per pound from, from a health standpoint or from what they perceive to be a health standpoint. I prefer the products that take on the, the decadence claim because there's a whole other market for pure decadence. Fancy chocolates, uh, gourmet ingredients like truffles and, and olive oils and things like that. You know, those are real foods that taste good, and that's what I like. I don't like the foods where they 
try to take everything out and put other things in and turn it into something it's not. You just kind of have to pick and choose like what tastes good and what's healthier and, and um, what you want to give to your kids. All processed packaged food has negatives to it. It's all been dried and dehydrated and fortified and whether it has natural flavors or artificial flavors, you know, really you shouldn't be giving your kids any packaged products. You should just be giving them like fruit and like healthy food. Give them like an apple. That's what my mom said. She said, if, if, you, if you're hungry, you'll eat an apple. And I was like, I'm not really that hungry, I guess. <laughs> I want the gummy bears, but, but I don't want the apple. I don't want the banana. So that's what you have to ask yourself every time you're reaching for like a convenient snack. Like, are you really hungry? If you were, you would eat grapes. People like you support The Justin Hall Show on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash justin.